This is Balanced Rock, a real scenic area in South Central Idaho, not too far from the towns of Buell and uh, Castleford. And we're gonna spend a few minutes here uh, talking specifically about Balanced Rock and then head down the road to what I think is a much more interesting geologic story. So when we see similar rocks like this in other areas, it's usually a case of a harder, more resistant rock on top and a softer rock forming the pedestal and then uh, the rates of weathering being different where the rock on top is more uh, protected from the elements and the rock down below is softer that sort of lends itself to that balanced rock forming. What's interesting here is the rock is all the same. It's all this rock called rhyolite, a volcanic rock uh, that forms the entire face here. And this balanced rock is sort of formed primarily due to the fracturing in the rock. So these rocks have been broken and fractured partly by um, uh, the cooling and crystallization of this volcanic rock over time, but also tectonic stresses that have fractured the rock into fins. And then as you add in the effects of frost wedging, like the freeze-thaw cycles that occur in the rocks, that's what's ultimately split these rocks into isolated little pillars and hoodoos, and then formed uh, this scenic attraction here, this sort of pillar on a rock. So we're gonna head down the road and look a little bit at these rocks and as we do so we'll talk a little bit about the volcanic history of this area so this part of idaho uh, was formed in terms of the volcanic rocks was formed when this section of idaho slid across the yellowstone hotspot so the same plume of magma the same source of material and magma that sits underneath yellowstone national park was once underneath uh, this part of idaho about seven to ten million years ago and as that magma rose from deep within the earth uh, as it intersected the lower parts of the crust it started melting part of that those rocks and assimilating them into the magma and it changed the chemistry of the magma from what was originally a basaltic magma and that's the kind of lava you see pouring out of the ground like in iceland or hawaii places like that as that crustal material became incorporated in the magma, it changed the chemistry of the magma, made it much more rich in something called silica, and the end result is that the magma became much more sticky and pasty, um, didn't flow as well, and what that had the effect of doing was trapping gases in the magma. So typically uh, in basaltic magmas, we see that gases can escape pretty easily and we get non-explosive eruptions. When we have this type of material, rhyolite uh, magmas, those magmas trap a lot of gases. So the, the nature of the magma is so thick and pasty that it traps a lot of them the uh, gases in the magma and what happens is those gas pressures ultimately build and build until you finally get a very explosive eruption and that's exactly what happened in this part of Idaho uh, again between 10 to 7 million years ago what's interesting about the balanced rock area is we have all this rhyolite up here um, but what's difficult for geologists is rhyolite can actually erupt two different ways it can erupt in very violent explosive eruptions which produce a lot of ash um, or the rhyolite can ooze out of the ground it's kind of like a toothpaste type material just thick and pasty and just kind of flowing and rolling over on itself <clears throat> you might think that well it should be easy to figure out ash versus rhyolite but what happens when the, we have these very explosive eruptions of ash in this part of idaho and this has continued into the yellowstone region as well is that the ash can be so hot uh, when it comes to rest, it actually remelts and then kind of rolls and flows over on itself. So it essentially becomes a lava-like material um, at the end. And so that's where it's really difficult for geologists to differentiate rhyolitic lava flows that poured across the ground and rhyolitic ash clouds that moved across the landscape and then kind of re-melted uh, before ultimately cooling and crystallizing. So as we head down the road here, um, what we have is we have uh, the road more or less follows a fault system that goes up and down this highway, this road here. On the north side or the, the left side here as I'm walking of the road, we have rhyolites that are about 8.2 million years old. These are the, called the balanced rock rhyolites and these have uh, the telltale signs of lava flow. So these were actually thick rhyolites, again like toothpaste, that was just kind of flowing and pouring out of the ground. 
Um, on the right side of the road or the south side of the road uh, is a down drop side of the fault system. So the left side has pushed the rocks up and the right side is the lower side of the fault system. And these rocks on this side over here are a little bit younger. They're about 8.1 million years old. And these rocks, even though they look very similar to the rocks on the other side, there's a few pieces of evidence we're gonna look at here that tell us that these rocks actually formed as these uh, violent eruptions of ash that barreled across the landscape and then ultimately cooled and solidified. So we can take a quick look at some of this rhyolite here. Uh, in places, we can actually see where it kind of folds over on itself. So you can actually see it's kind of layered here, all these uh, particles, uh, there's crystals in it. Um, in some cases, the ash actually rolled over on itself um, and folded and deformed. We can actually see a spot right down here in the road cut, these kind of interesting holes that have been drilled in the rock here. These are actually places where geologists have come to figure out uh, the age and the chemistry of these lava flows and have actually drilled into the rock and taken little core samples out of, out of the rock there. So the outcrop we really want to focus on here uh, is right here on the south side of the road. And what we see here, we'll come down just a little bit further uh, to where we can see several different units here. This is a good spot here. So what we can see here is um, up above a cliff of rhyolite and then sitting below that is maybe about four feet or so of white to gray ash. Then kind of this very sharp contrast with this brick red kind of unit here which grades into this kind of uh, blocky chunks of rhyolite. So if we start our story down at the bottom here, what we have here is a highly fractured zone of rhyolite. This is the older lava flow rhyolite, the 8.2 million year old rhyolite uh, that's the same as the rhyolite we see on the north side of the road. So this would have erupted as these thick lava flows, again, just kind of rolling over on themselves. And near the top of the flow is where it's fragmenting and breaking up. So you can see as we move uh, up this the road cut here, the rocks are kind of fragmented and broken into angular pieces. This is what we call a breccia. So we have a rhyolite breccia near the top. Then we get into this reddish brick red unit here. This is a paleosol. So this is some soil between these big rhyolite fragments. And it's red because the heat from the um, overlying ash layer has kind of baked and oxidized some of the iron in those rocks themselves. So if we actually come up here and look at uh, this white layer here, this layer is really cool. This is actually ash um, that's consolidated into a rock called tuff. So we can see it's layered. We can see uh, that it kind of drapes across these over uh, the underlying rhyolites here. Again, it's only maybe four feet thick. But what this represents is after the rhyolitic lava erupted, there was a period of maybe 100,000 years or so. And then the next big thing was a huge cataclysmic super eruption of rhyolitic material in the form of ash. And as that ash just sort of settled on the landscape, it formed this four or five foot thick layer we see here of tuff. So this represents the initial ash fall that just fell out of the sky as this eruption was beginning. And then later what happened was the pyroclastic flows, the big ash plumes barreling across the, the land surface like an avalanche moved across the, this area on top of the ash that fell out of the ground. And that's what was fused together to form the thicker um, and stiffer and more resistant rhyolite we see above. What's awesome about this unit here is uh, a recent uh, research publication, I believe from a geologist who works and uh, teaches in, in England, uh, came out here and studied this. There's a deep borehole near the town of Kimberley, and they intersected this layer of ash, this, this rhyolite, in Kimberley and found that it was almost a mile thick. And so by looking at the chemistry and the age of that unit, finding it in other places 
in South Central Idaho, they were actually able to quantify how widespread uh, and significant and, and massive this eruption was. So this was truly a super volcanic eruption on this on a similar scale to some of the big Yellowstone eruptions you've you've heard about. So this was a big big eruption that happened right here in southern Idaho about uh, 8.1 million years ago. So a really remarkable story, and we'll kind of just end with kind of a cool view of the whole thing here, where we have uh, again the the rhyolitic breccia from the lava flow down low kind of grading up into uh, this paleosol this red layer here this oxidized layer here uh, so that would have represented some period of uh, erosion then the ash that fell out of the sky during that eruption there and then ultimately the pyroclastic flow above just really awesome stuff here in southern idaho near balanced rock